Hi, everyone. It's still June 6, 2021. This is part two, the biological warfare part. The Communist Party in China planning a major attack on the United States, bioweapons, cyber war, kamikaze drones, infrastructure, sabotage. Uh, if you haven't seen part one, um, I focused on the cyber warfare attacks. Now I want to focus on the biological attack, the, um, sorry, the bioweapons. Now, I think a lot of people are beginning to question where this virus came from that we're dealing with right now. A lot of questions about whether or not it was man-made or natural. Can't say too much about that because I'd like to keep this video on this channel. But um, I, I didn't read this entire article in part one. I'm not going to do it now. I will link below, and if you want to read it, go ahead. But I just want to now focus on this article, which I've had bookmarked for a while, Doug Casey on the shocking 2025 Deagle forecast, war, population reduction, and the collapse of the West. Do you know what Deagle is, that site? I think a lot of you probably do. A private online source for the military capabilities of the world's nation states. It recently released a shocking five-year forecast. The report analyzes countries by projected population size, GDP, defense budget, and much more. In it, they predict a 70% reduction in the size of the United States population uh, by 2025. Doug Casey stated, I wasn't, I wasn't familiar with Deagle. It keeps a low profile. Deagle is in the same business as Jane's, which has been in the business of analyzing weapon systems for many decades. The Deagle website, which is quite sophisticated, makes it clear we're not dealing with some blogger concocting outrageous clickbait uh, bait. It seems to be well-connected with defense contractors and government agencies like the CIA. Uh, they've predicted a 70% reduction in the U.S. population, the same percentage in Europe, by 2025. It's hard to believe that anybody in their position would make a forecast like that. There's no logical business reason for it, especially since it was done before uh, the pandemic gripped the world. It stretches stretches a reader's credulity, which for sure, but what we're living stretches credulity, so could it possibly happen? It would be the biggest thing in world history. Does it have a basis in reality, or is it just some bizarre trolling exercise? I'm not sure. It's hard to take almost anything from any source at face value these days. But for the last several years, several years, I've been saying that World War III would basically be a biological war. Of course, it will have substantial conventional nuclear, space-based, AI, computer elements as well. But its most serious component will be biological. Essentially, it will involve the use of bacteria and viruses to wipe out the enemy. Odds are that it will be between the United States and China. But since anyone with a CRISPR in their garage can hack the genome and DNA of almost anything and anybody, there are no limits to the possibility. From the Chinese point of view, a biological war makes all the sense in the world. That's because the Han Chinese share a lot of genetic similarities. Presumably, a bacteria 
or a virus can be bred to favor the Chinese and take out most everybody else. Americans who, like everybody else, see themselves as the good guys believe we're immune to that. However, don't forget that the U.S. pioneered modern bio-warfare. Fort Detrick, Maryland has been an epicenter of it for 70 years. And there are undoubtedly many more sites, clandestine sites. I've posted on those sites. And our military has actually released these man-made bioweapons, their experiments, on the innocent people in the country where they were designing these uh, designer viruses. And yes, of course, China is, and a lot of countries are doing the same. What shocks me is not that a bio war is being researched or even actively war-gamed, but that a connected organization like Deagle is actually saying it publicly. It's not like what goes on in the spook community is an open book. Well, they're opening the books more and more. That is what is rather shocking because no matter how many books they open, still people literally refuse to believe any evidence, believe what's written in those books, even if it's written by the the person or people who are committing the crimes, and still people refuse to believe it. Deagle doesn't explicitly say what exactly will cause the great die-off, but there are many advantages to biological warfare over other types of warfare. Um, and it's probably inevitable now that the technology has made it practical. Maybe I should just play this right now. Remember, and it was hard to find this portion of this interview that Bill and Melinda gave uh, listen to what they have to say. So we, you know, we'll have to prepare for the next one. That, you know, I'd say is, uh, will get attention this time. Okay, so I'm going to play that bit just again. Look at their smile, okay? That, that should really raise eyebrows. This is a very creepy moment in this interview. They're talking about the next pandemic that will be far worse than this pandemic that doesn't seem to ever want to end. And they smile when they say that the next pandemic will get attention this time, like this pandemic didn't receive the attention that they wanted it to or whatever. These people are so psychopathic that as much as we try to understand them, there is no understanding, you know, because th they have a mindset that is rather, well, evil, subhuman. And if you don't have that mindset, it's it's truly hard to imagine that other human beings are so different from you that they could commit the kind of evil that they do. One more time. To prepare for the next one, that, you know, I'd say is, uh, will get attention this time. unbelievably creepy. So they're talking about preparing for another pandemic that's far worse than what we already have experienced. And they're smiling. 
Another virus? Okay. Biological warfare. Uh, yes, there are um, advantages to this kind of warfare. doesn't destroy material. Bioweapons can be structured to attack only certain racial groups. The diverse population of the U.S. could also be either an advantage or disadvantage, depending on who strikes first. They're cheap, easy to fabricate. Bioweapons don't need sophisticated delivery systems and offer plausible deniability. You blame someone else. They launched the attack. We didn't. Okay. Um, Deagle included a lengthy disclaimer, some of which states, after COVID, we can draw two major conclusions. The Western world success model has been built over societies with no real, uh, resilience that can barely withstand any hardship, even a low-intensity one. It was assumed, but we got the full confirmation beyond any doubt. Westerners, because we've not lived the uh, those full-scale attacks that we've perpetrated on other countries, we've been rather squishy, very comfortable, weak, taking for granted that we're superior and our government our governments are on it and they're going to keep us protected and no wrong thinking so the pandemic crisis will be used to extend the life of this dying economic system through the so-called great reset so um Doug Casey is a, um, he's in the financial sector. Doug, you've written extensively about the economic, political, cultural, and social decline in the United States long before it became a popular topic of discussion. Has anything changed in your perspective on the future of the United States? No. I'm afraid the election of actual Bolsheviks in 2020, and I don't use that term lightly, has sealed its fate. Not to mention that the nomenclature um, in most major cities and states are cut off, cut from the same cloth, sorry. The U.S. is on such a self-destructive path that the Chinese don't have to do anything in order to win. All they need to do is lay back and be quiet. The West is destroying itself. The U.S. government has been helping China, has been actually helping China destroy the U.S. And, you know, we produce nothing. China produces almost everything. China is making money off of all of us because we produce nothing. So we give a whole lot of money to China because we buy their products. Does that, does that sound like a good plan for a country? Not at all. There is one thing I question about Deagle's statement that you quoted. The, the pandemic crisis will be used to extend the life of this dying economic system through something called the Great Reset. Very odd statement because the crisis isn't extending the life of the dying economic system. It's putting the final nail in its coffin. The Great Reset <clears throat> has nothing to do with preserving the current economic system. It's about formalizing a new one. Here's a wild and crazy thought. What if the real problem isn't so much the virus itself? Hmm. What if the real problem is the new and they turn out to have 
deadly effects. Ted Turner, Bill Gates, numerous others. The elite, as they like to call themselves, um, have talked for a whole long time about depopulating the planet. We've got to do it. We've got to do it. And 80%, I think Ted Turner said 90 well, I can't remember exactly. It was pretty high. Uh, shocking. Shocking to believe that some group would take advantage of this to cull the human population. Certainly technically feasible. History is replete, overrun, actually, with psychos who try to destroy everybody once they get in power. The disclaimer in the Deagle report goes on to say, the collapse of the Western financial system and ultimately the Western civilization has been the major driver in the forecast along with a confluence of crisis with a devastating outcome. As the pandemic has proven, Western societies embracing multiculturalism and extreme liberalism are unable to deal with any real hardship. Is the Western civilization seeing a confluence of crises coming together in a perfect storm? Yes, we've got a perfect storm that's that's occurring right now. But here, Doug Casey, it seems like everything is starting to happen at once. And at a hyperbolically accelerating rate. While the worlds of science and technology are approaching Ray Kurzweil's utopian singularity, the worlds of politics and sociology are approaching a dystopian anti-singularity. Singularity. Sorry, I'm tired and I'm, I sense some slurring We're absolutely en route to a gigantic financial crisis featuring the destruction of the U.S. dollar and with it, the savings of a large percentage of the planet's people will be impoverished because their savings are in dollars. Much of the value people thought they had in stocks, bonds, real estate, pensions, and insurance could disappear. And this was, this I've had bookmarked for now, I think several months. I don't know if you, you know, pay attention to what is happening with our economy, but uh, pretty much everything that he just said in this one little paragraph, it's getting worse and worse and worse every day. What's worse are the economic consequences, likely to see wholesale, wholesale unemployment, a collapse in business activity, corporate bankruptcies, even while taxes go up radically. Even worse are the social ramifications, critical race theory, which emphasizes the differences between race groups, creating actual race hatred. One consequence of the financial and economic upsets will be riots like those in 2020. The mass migration of people from alien cultures who don't share Western values into the U.S. and Europe is destabilizing. The U.S. has, in fact, become a multicultural domestic empire. But also remember, we still have a crisis on that border, you know, the U.S.-Mexico border. And a whole lot are coming into this country. Our government is not keeping track of them. The courts are backlogged. So those who get that court date to show up for, well, can you stay here or do you have to leave? You know, that court will make the decision. The court dates are now scheduled for three years from now? All right, we're in such deep trouble. 
Political consequences are evident. The Biden people in Washington, D.C. are exactly the same personality types who took over Russia in 1917, France in 1789. They aren't going to let go of the apparatus of power now that they've got it. They will find a way to reinstall themselves in 2024. The military, the U.S. spends something like $1 trillion on defense annually, but they can't protect us. Ah, but nobody knows for certain how much and where that money goes. These budgets are complicated. Military spending is hidden here, there, everywhere. It doesn't defend the United States. It just antagonizes foreigners. It's also interesting interesting that the Department of Defense is now trying to root out conservative political views from the rank-and-file soldiers. We're going after our own. Hello? Let's get back to what could collapse the populations of North America and Europe by over 50%. Perhaps Deagle is anticipating a serious collapse of complex society because food won't be grown, processed, and sent to cities. Most people in today's highly urbanized world, from cubicle dwellers to ghetto rats are incapable of surviving for more than a week. If supply chains break any further, then they're broken already. The report also discusses a prediction regarding a potential war that involves Russia and China against the U.S. And if that happens, we will have our head handed to us. A war, at least with China, seems inevitable. It will likely be fomented by the U.S. because as the economy goes bad, governments always look for somebody else, an outsider, to blame. I recognize this will outrage jingoists and nationalists. The U.S. government is actually the most dangerous force on the planet much more dangerous than the Chinese, the Russians, or anybody else. U.S. government is unique in actively and aggressively looking for trouble absolutely everywhere, sticking its nose into everything. Only the U.S. has troops in a hundred other countries and is fighting hot wars in several more. Okay, the Russians... Everything is blamed on the Russians. Okay, for instance, the Russians. They're the aggressors because they may retake the Crimea Crimea and Donbass region. Most Americans who can't even find those places on the map are unaware that Crimea, Crimea had been a part of Russia since it was taken from the Ottomans in the 18th century and is mostly populated by ethnic Russians. Khrushchev arbitrarily transferred it from the Russian SSR to the Ukrainian SSR in 1954 for personal political reasons. Shortly after Stalin's death, the current problem started only after the U.S. fomented a coup d'etat, a so-called color revolution that was staged. As most color revolutions have been. Uh, That was in Ukraine in 2014. It then made sense for Putin to retake it, much like the U.S. tried to overthrow Castro after he ousted Batista. What is also truly amazing is everything that we blame other countries for, we do. The, 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 The hypocrisy, it's like, oh my God, it's killing us. You know, the weight of hypocrisy, the stunning uh, numbers of hypocrites in this country. And that's enough to, you know, just put you under six feet. So, it's a problem between Russia and Ukraine, none of our business, the Biden regime butting in is somewhat analogous to Russia threatening war over the U.S. owning Puerto Rico. 
We don't need a serious war with Russia over nothing. But hey, that's what we do. That's what we're exceptional at. Taiwan is similar. Historically, it's just a secessionist Chinese province. Or not, perhaps it's a government in exile. But no matter, you know, it's none of our business whether we go to war with each other. And we have stated that we will, we will interfere with what's going on in Taiwan right now. U.S. government intervention could easily start a conflict with China. It might end with the sinking of a couple of U.S. carrier groups, or it might evolve into World War III. We're still in Afghanistan, Central Asia, the Middle East. We're still, you know, causing uh, abject chaos in Libya, Syria. We're, you know, the U.S. is unnecessarily and stupidly whacking hornets' nest everywhere in the world, bankrupting itself, making enemies, setting the stage for something really significant. Every American should be outraged by what our government and military continue to do and uh, to think that there's not going to be repercussions of the evil that we have committed and continue to commit. One thing is for sure, there will be a great deal of change taking place in the years ahead. So, another virus? How about all of those happening? How about the power grid, another virus, people dying? Oh, yeah. These are the people that are creating all of this These are the people who smile, who smile at the next pandemic. You know, it's really going to get your attention. One more time. You know, we'll have to prepare for the next one. That, you know, I'd say is, uh, will get attention this time. Okay, there's very few of them. There's a whole lot of us. Why are we letting them destroy our lives? Because we can't unite. What a shame. What a shame. 